Hey everybody, welcome to CSS Hacks for the wonderful Elemental page builder in WordPress and today is all about getting those elements aligned in neighboring columns. And it's a standard design here that we have an icon box widget and a button and we can see there's a misalignment because the content within is variable. And we have a similar setup here where we've used individual items. Okay, so there's four widgets creating the same output. And I'm going to show you two ways of styling this automatically. Now the current fix would be to actually just select the buttons and go and add ourselves some top padding to each of them until we find the right place and then tweak accordingly for our responsiveness and then to do this process for every design we create. So it is the easiest simple way to do it in the editor. And we could apply the same logic here. Now an alternative method would be to actually work with nested sections where we can actually specify section heights. So in here we can actually specify that we want this to be say a minimum of 300 and then we can go across and do the same for each of our variable sections. And there we go, there's a simple fix and we end up all those added values of additional columns and section backgrounds to style it accordingly. But it creates a hell of a lot of markup and personally is not the best way in my view to go unless of course you need those extra styling capabilities. So how can we use a bit of CSS to fix these two problems? So the first one where we're only dealing with two elements, we want one push to the top and one push to the bottom. We can basically jump to the section and give it our first class and again initial them at the front and name them something appropriately so we know what they're doing and we have our DB flex column class and then we're going to target actually an elemental widget trap which is basically the container that wraps the widgets which sits inside another container which sits inside the column so it has to be there for it to work properly now for flex to work you need to really be able to specify the size of its container and we're working with a column so we only got to specify the height and we're going to use 100 percent and therefore the content will define it and so let's just zoom out and see what happens when we add the display flex property and you'll see there auto complete in the custom code area which is a 1.8 update on elemental which is absolutely brilliant along with the inline element um, editor so therefore i highly recommend on a test bed site that you upgrade to 1.8 and check that stuff out so now we can see that the flex has kicked in and by default it works across columns so now we just need to adjust its direction by using the flex direction property and tell it to run across down the column now the last part is to justify the content within that column and of one of the many properties there is a space between property and there we go. We now have our elements forced to align to the top and the bottom and it doesn't matter if the content within a column changes they automatically reflow. So let's just use this class over and over again where we've got two elements in a column but what happens when we go to our other section where we've got multiple elements making up so let's see so let's put this class in place and now we can see yep the top elements and the bottom elements are aligned but we've got a bit of a mess in the middle so there is ways that we could fix this with flex and we could add padding etc to move stuff around but that's just a nightmare so let's start working with the wonderful css grid specification create ourselves a new db grid column class jump into the editor apply this and again we need to target that widget wrap for this to work and we're going to give this a display property of grid there you go we already see some adjustments to what we see on screen now great part about grid is it allows you to work with columns and rows as opposed to one or the other so we can now define ourselves a template and we're not interested in the columns because we already have the elemental ones in place and we're not we're only working in rows so we're going to actually specify the grid template rows and now we can prescribe what each of the four rows one for each of the widgets are actually going to be sized in height so here we go we now specified 100 pixels 100 pixels 200 and 100 and they all fall happily in alignment but using fixed pixels for content that may change isn't a good way so we could use uh, percentages m spaces viewport heights etc but let's introduce the new unit that comes with css grid which is fractions which basically as you complete out this field i've just described a row set that's made up of five fractions and two of those fractions are being given to this 
third element in the row and the rest is being split equally as one fraction each. So we can adjust this accordingly. Let's say we want that to occupy half of the space, then we'd need to have six fractions and that occupies three of them. And the great part of this is that the content will now ebb and flow accordingly. So let's just punch in some more code and there we go. But in doing so, you can see because the overall container has grown, so has the height of the fractions. So the way you can adjust for this, there is other options. There's a min-max option within CSS Grid, but I'm not going to go into that detail today. And we can actually go back in and say there's other ways around this. We can either increase the amount of fractions that this occupies. Okay, so we've now retuned it. Or we can mix and match our units. So the first one, we always want to be 100 pixels in height. The next one, we only need it to be 60 pixels in height. And lo and behold, what element, what CSS Grid will do is calculate what's remaining and divide it up between the fractions you specify. So that's a real, real easy way of now customizing our columns so the elemental widgets automatically align themselves and will continue to ebb and flow as content is added or removed without any issues. So I'm hoping, again, that CSS has shown you a few little tricks that you can do with a wonderful Elemental page builder, and that's all from me.